yesterday, everyone got a taste of the Overwatch League with the preseason kicking off. There were three matches played between six, uh, I mean five teams, uh, and it was pretty great. If you caught it yourself on Twitch, uh, I mean MLG TV, I hope you really enjoyed. The first match was played between the Florida Mayhem and the San Francisco Shock. Now Florida found themselves down three maps to zero going in to the fourth round. Uh, the Shock had already taken three maps off of them, and it was crushing. They were just crushing defeats. Social media was already lighting up with, you know, Florida's the worst team in Overwatch League. You know, they're so bad, whatever. So they had to bring something big to the table in their fourth and final round on Eichenwald. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and in their fourth and final round, the Florida Mayhem brought out a very unique and cool strategy. And that was Attack Orissa, plus some other stuff that we'll get into. But generally, the star of the composition was definitely Orissa. Not a hero you normally consider very attacky, right? Uh, certainly never traditionally used in that way. But the exciting part is this strategy isn't some sort of super complicated, crazy thing. You can actually implement this into your own games. So, before the gates open, let's quickly take a look at our compositions. So we'll just breeze right past the San Francisco Shock and their roster. It's very standard. You know, Winston Diva as the tank mix-up. We have our two DPS heroes, which are the Tracer and the Soldier, very normal. And of course, the Mercy Zenyatta combo. Mercy's OP, Zenyatta combos well with Mercy, so boom, that's how it works. Although I guess the word boom applies a little bit more to the Florida Mayhem with the bomb as their logo. Now, this is the team comp we're really concerned about. Tivik is not playing Hanzo. He's just going to use it to throw out a Sonic arrow to deal with cheese or whatever. Um, so we'll see him switch in just a second. Boom, Junkrat. All right, now, the two supports, once again, normal. Zenyatta, Mercy, you're going to see that every time. But these other four heroes, at least all together like this, not so standard. So, of course, the all-star is Orisa. We're going to see that on attack, obviously, the way Orisa works is you just sort of march up, you place a barrier down, and then once it's off cooldown, you place another barrier down a little bit further up. You march up. Once that's off cooldown, you place another barrier a little bit further up. And, uh, well, maybe you'll get what I mean by this. So Orissa's going to throw her barrier down. Now, notice that the Shock is playing pretty passively. They're, they're not really playing up at all. A lot of teams opt to do this. It's not really right or wrong to play up or back here on the first point of Eichenwald. But that's what they're doing. So it's going to help out the strat quite a bit. Um, we're going to see that... They're going to use it, and actually Mayhem are going to get more distance than normally they would. But there's another shield. Now, notice they're not really pushing up anymore. There are members of Mayhem over there using the pillar as a shield. But right now, the camera and we are going to be focusing on Orissa. Now, notice, barrier's up again. So, boom, we're going to now move on to the point. That was quite a long time. Quite a long time. It's 3.30, in case you can't read it because of the YouTube compression. But... 3.30. 30 seconds have already elapsed in the game, and now we're on the point. So it's a bit slower than most other strategies, but it's not tremendously slow. It's not insane or anything like that. But here is the key. Here's the key. Now, the Shock doesn't really look like they're fighting back too much, and that's because the Orissa is pushing them back, holding them back with the shields, but the important part is these other three heroes. We have Junkrat and Roadhog, who are particularly vital, to this, to this composition because they provide a tremendous amount of pokey sort of damage. Junkrat in particular, but Roadhog really burns shields down. This is very important because this team composition is built so that nothing can fight it from mid-range. The idea is your Orisa puts a shield down, your, your mid-range team pokes everyone out of their range. Like you can't stand in a Junkrat's uh, sphere of influence. You can't stand in a Roadhog's sphere of influence. So... You push them back, you shove them back with those, your zoning type of heroes, and then you put the Orisha shield up again, and you move forward. We then, of course, have Logix on McCree, who's another, again, mid-range hero, and then he has the added benefit of being able to flashbang anyone who dives in on you, because remember, dive is pretty popular here, uh, you know, in the meta right now, in case you didn't notice. So having McCree there, having Roadhog there to stun anyone who dives on you, pretty clever. And so you're going to see that actually Mayhem, after, like I said, they got crushed in the previous three rounds, guys. Um, Oasis was maybe kind of close, but other than that, sh the shock just really killed them. And for the first time, 
Mayhem really came out on top. And so now, now notice because this composition is a little bit slow, they're going to be pushing up and playing a little bit more aggressive than they normally would. You know, space is just so important for this team. You can't, at any time with this particular team, with Arissa, they give you an inch, you have to take it. Because like I said, it's inherently a little bit of a slow team. Not overly slow, not like unwinnably slow, but it, it certainly compared to dive composition, it's nothing. We're going to be able to see a weakness actually of this composition. So what makes this strong? Well, the idea is you go in a straight line, you just go boom in a straight line and you shield, shield, shield your way up. That's kind of what we just saw in the first point. But when we get a bit more split up like this, even simple things like a soldier in the back, even if it's ba even if it's Baby Bay, one of the most insane hit scan in the world, it starts to get a bit rough. Something else that this team has, by the way, I don't even, I don't, I don't actually know what that ultimate was. That was kind of weird swoosh. Uh, by the way, I think it got killed by the cart moving. Um, so that's rough. But other than that, I still don't think that four, four man random bongos uh, into nothing is super awesome. But, um, <clears throat> you know, not only does the, is this team very linear in its motion, how you just need to sort of walk forward like this, but also it's very synergistic. And that's something that is quite a bit stronger than maybe it first looks like. Orisa's right click is absolutely vital to how this team functions because you can do a bunch of things. You can do Orisa right click into a hog hook. You can do Orisa right click into a junk rat tire. We see that used a couple times and it's absolutely insane. And uh, even simpler things like we can do Orisa hook into a uh, into a dead eye. You know, hook them forward, give them way more time, give your McCree way more time to lock on with Deadeye. And man, that was a dirty tire, by, by the way, taking out Doc on Mercy. So we can see that this team is actually really cool. There's lots of layers of synergy, not, to, not just the fact that they're all mid-range, that they like to poke up and sort of march up slowly, but they also have all have that synergy with the Orisa right click. And we're going to see that they actually wind up doing pretty well here. Really nice, uh, you know, nice job by Tivik. <laughs> uh, the mines are pretty strong, so I've heard from Junkrat. So uh, Mayhem is going to push through here without too much of a problem. All right, so skipping forward a bit. Now they took the point very easy. Pretty much nothing happened in between here. But um, one of the reasons why this composition is working here is because we're on Eichenwald. Now, there are other maps that this composition would work on. Uh, I'll let you use your imagination, but I'll explain why Eichenwald is important, and then you can extrapolate yourself, right? So Eichenwald is full of, and this is a great example, thank you cameraman for the wide shot, full of really, like I said, linear, sort of corridory areas. And um, that's kind of a payload thing in general, but Eichenwald in particular, very closed in. Now this is just the third point, but if you look at all three points, it's pretty similar. Now, because of this, you can put a shield here. It blocks off everything, very hard to get behind you. Then you can move up, put a shield here, then put a shield here, and then you can just keep going and uh, that's pretty much what we're seeing the mayhem, uh, may mayhem do. And the one part of the map where it's kind of easier to get behind, we saw them hit a bit of a roadblock. So something like a Junker Town, where enemies could sort of be all over, could be a bit difficult for this particular composition. Something, you know, the more wide open type of payload maps, like Route 66, where it's easier for the other team to get in front of you particularly. I think that would be the map where this really would not work very well on. But these types of maps that are very linear, and you just sort of walk forward and march into them, these are the maps where it's really great on Tavik, landing the kill on Tanomi. It's going to make this a pretty easy push. Um, and pretty much there, that that's pretty much the strat. Now, we're going to struggle for a little bit more to push through this, but we fight for about another minute. And there's some drama back and forth. We saw Baby Bay landed a tire onto Swoosh's Orisa, but um, the res is fine. And Mayhem pushed this relatively cleanly. You know, Eichenwald's a pretty hard map to full take, let alone in it's going to wind up being like a minute 45 seconds. So really insane, crazy strat that um, was a little bit shocking to San Francisco. But we're not going to finish. We're going to do a little bonus at the end here. So we just saw how good this was on attack. And ironically, I want to show you how kind of mediocre to bad. I don't know exactly how bad, but it's it's certainly not as good um, on defense 
as it is on attack because Mayhem tries this exact same strat on the first point to defend. Let's take a look at that. All right, so here we are again. We've swapped places. The San Francisco Shock are now on attack and Mayhem is on defense. If we take a look at it, by the way, real quick, we got our two supports. We got our Roadhog, uh, McCree, Junkrat, Orissa. Okay, it's all the same. Cool, all the same. Now, figure if it works on attack, it might work on defense. Not so much. Now, the Shock are doing this clever little wraparound. Not, not a super new tactic, but it's something that happens. Now, here's the thing, right? We were talking before about the strength of the, of the strategy on attack is that you can sort of control the direction of the fight. As an attacker, you control the momentum. If you go and push in this direction, the momentum of the fight, it will always be in this direction. And if you set it up properly, you can make these linear sort of pathways for your list, for your Arisa to like march up, place a shield, march up, place a shield, march up, place a shield. And now you're on the point and now you win, right? You can't do that so much on defense. On defense, you don't have control over the, the other team has control over the momentum. So they can really mess with it, especially on a map like Eichenwald here, where the, you know, we can do some crazy stuff like this. We see already Tavik goes down, and the chaos of the fight really doesn't lend well to Orissa's static shield. A Reinhardt would be much better. I mean, if you're going to run a shield, a Reinhardt would be much better. Um, not saying you should run Reinhardt, but Baby Bay, he misses a lot of shots initially, but there we go. Gets pretty easy kills. And so um, just as easily as Mayhem took the first point with their Orissa strat, they lose the first point defending with it. And uh, we're going to see Manhattan try to hold out for a little longer. But there we go. Exact same amount of time. Very, very quickly. Shock are going to take it. So anyway, May uh, Mayhem winds up swapping off the Orissa. And they slowly swap off to a more standard composition. They, they get beaten until they slowly s swap off to a more standard composition that they're comfortable with. And, uh, well something happens maybe you should go watch for yourself uh you can check out the vods i don't know where you can check out the vods they're probably on mlg tv um they're not up yet as the time of me making this video but maybe they'll be up uh, if there is i'll put a link in the comments um it was a pretty cool series i i really uh am looking forward to today's games or tomorrow's games or i don't know how time works in this weird time warp land of uploading youtube videos anyway guys i hope you all enjoyed if you want to see more content i'll be releasing more overwatch league content uh soon probably within a day or two but also go check out tempo storms youtube channel i'll be posting a team light a team fight highlight series i don't know if you guys remember that uh you old schoolers probably remember my team fight highlight series but um i'll be teaming up with them to post a team fight highlight series on their channel and you can go check that out. It's in the description below. Tempo Storm. Tempo Storm. Uh, big thanks to them. I do a really cool team fight between the uh, Seoul Dynasty and the Shanghai Dragons. All right, guys. I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope to see you soon. Never forget to stay positive and have a great day. All right, guys. See you next time.